Hey, Business Calculus students. What we're going to be doing is finding some antiderivatives. So please note that we are finding indefinite intervals here. We don't have limits on our integration sign. So what this means is find a family of antiderivatives. What I've placed over here are the first four rules that we talk about in section 7.1. Our rule for power functions, our rule for constants, our rule for sums and differences, and our rule for constant multiples. So I'm going to use all those rules over here as we take some antiderivatives. So let's look at number one. The first thing we see here is that we see an x cubed. So that means we're moving over here and we're going, we're saying, all right, what's the antiderivative of x cubed? My n is three. So what I'm going to have is one over three plus one times x to the three plus one. All right, I see that plus sign, and I go, all right, according to this, I just move to the next term. I see that 2, and I go, hey, that's a constant multiple. I'm going to leave that out in front. So now I need to take the antiderivative of x. I can imagine a little imaginary 1 up there. That's the power that I have. So I'm going to use this rule again, except I'm going to be using n equals 1. So the antiderivative of x to the first is... 1 over 1 plus 1 times x to the 1 plus 1. All right, we've taken care of x cubed. We've taken care of 2x. Now we have to take care of 1. It's a constant. The antiderivative of a constant is just that constant times x. So this is plus 1 times x. And we always ought to add on the plus c at the end because we've got a family of antiderivatives. So writing that a little bit more easily, that is 1 fourth x to the fourth. This is 2 times a half, so that cancels. So we just get x squared plus x plus c. And we can check that. What happens if I take the derivative of 1 fourth x to the fourth plus x squared plus x plus c. Well, the 4 comes down and hits that 4. They cancel out. I've got x cubed plus the derivative of x squared is 2x plus 1. Cool. Math works. I was able to anti-differentiate that expression. Okay, so let's, now that we have that, let's do the second one. All right, number 2. Note here that I have a different variable, t, but that's okay. I'm just going to imagine everything is with respect to t instead of with respect to x. So we're going to have 2 times the antiderivative of t to the fourth. So I'm going to have a 4 for n. So I'm 1 over 4 plus 1 times t to the 4 plus 1 minus... We're going to use this again because I've got t squared, so n equals 2. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 plus 1 times t to the 2 plus 1 plus c. And we can rewrite that as 2 fifths t to the fifth minus 1 third t cubed plus c. How do we know our answer is correct? Well, differentiate it. So if I differentiate 2 fifths, whoops, not x, t to the fifth, minus 1 third t cubed plus c, that 5 hits the 5 down below. So I'm going to have 2 times t to the fourth, because my exponent goes down by 1, minus the 3 hits the 1 third. They cancel out. And I've got t squared, since my exponent goes down by 1 the derivative of a constant is zero. So cool, I checked and I got the right answer. So there are some examples of how to anti-differentiate using the first rules in section 7.1.